I'm Anna, and um, besides my uh, yarn randomizer uh, videos where I'm going over kind of what I'm working on right now and everything, I thought uh, it would be fun to go through uh, the shawls I had. About a week or so ago, I posted on Instagram uh, showing a picture of all 38 shawls I have in here uh, and that I wear, uh, and um, just to show you how, ma how many I've made. Uh, and I thought it might be an interesting idea to do a retrospective on them and to not try to do them all in one shot because 38 is a lot of shawls and I've made more than that, some I've given away. Um, I thought we'd go through about 10 at a time uh, and kind of review that kind of, and I'll go over, you know, lessons learned and, and that kind of thing with each one. And um, so, yeah, but first, I should tell you how I got started uh, knitting shawls and that was um, I'd kind of slowed down on knitting I've always been knitting since about 1980 early 82 um, but um, when the kids were I guess past grades past grade school through high school time frame I didn't knit nearly as much work was really busy and you know the kids had all kinds of stuff going on but as that those kind of things slowed down, I started picking up pretty seriously on knitting again. And um, in 2015, so I hadn't knit a shawl actually before 2015. I think before 2015, I had uh, kind of always thought of shawls as being kind of uh, uh, old fashioned or kind of not interesting to me. And, you know, people always wore them the same way, you know, they just around their shoulders, you know, and that kind of thing. And it um, didn't seem to be as much as a fashion statement uh, as it was just a utility uh, thing and uh, old-fashioned looking at that. Um, how little did I know? <laughs> but uh, so what happened is in 2015 I discovered, for one thing, Ravelry. Um, and so I took the time to kind of reboot. I got rid of a ton of old whips and I got rid of a ton of yarn I didn't want to use. And because I had been carting a lot of yarn around, I still kept a lot of the old yarn, but, but just got rid of a lot of stuff. I just, you know, I'm this, I'm not interested. Don't want to do this. Done with that. Got rid of all that stuff. And I visited a little yarn shop in Mason, Ohio. Um, oh, it might be Main Street. Oh, I'll have to take a look, but I'll link it uh, in the notes below. And picked up a couple of balls of yarn there after I saw a couple of little shawlettes on display there. And um, at the time where I was working, it just seemed like that was one of the new things was people wearing these little scarves and stuff just around, kind of around their necks and everything. And they're really cute. And I saw those shawl, shawlettes in the shop and I thought that'd be a lot of fun to knit. Um, and so I picked up a couple of balls of yarn on sale and proceeded to go try out uh, knitting uh, something like that for the first time. And so uh, the first one that I did, oh yeah, all these are, I'll provide a link that filters down to the shawls I've knitted in the notes. Um, um, but all every one of these is in my project page. As soon as I discovered Ravelry, everything had a project page and all the details and, and that kind of thing. Um, that's I just enjoy <laughs> doing that kind of thing that much. And so, and so uh, the very first uh, little shawlette I knitted was this little um, Ashton Ashton shawlette uh, out of this really nice tonal kind of purple yarn. Um, and it was interesting because I also hadn't really, you know, I hadn't blocked a shawl before and I'll be honest here and probably, I probably never blocked anything <laughs> before 2015. Um, you know, as I think about it, but, uh, so yeah, so I made this thing and, uh, it called for being, uh, so it was a big learning experience for me. Knitting, it was not a problem. It's just standard stuff. There are some things I would change there, and I'll show those in a minute. But, uh, and it noted in the notes for the shawl to block it out severely. <laughs> and so I got some blocking mats and some pins, and when I finished it, I did exactly that. And there's some really nice shots in my project page that show this thing being uh, pinned. 
But basically uh, what I would do is I would wear a little shawlette like this, kind of around, wrap it around, you know, just, and a lot of times like just a little bit to the side perhaps, you know, this kind of thing. And so very cute. And this, of course, purple is my favorite color. And so this checked off a lot of boxes. And so I really enjoyed working it. Um, what I would come to understand working shawls and stuff is my biggest pet peeve, and you'll see this as we go through these shawls, is when things curl at the edges like this. And so, you know, under its initial blocking, it stayed flat for a while, but over time, it's started to curl and I could, I'll definitely re-block it um, and stuff, but that that's a theme that'll come up. And so, my tendency now is to definitely favor shawls that where it's clear, uh, it's been designed. Uh, it's designed in such a way that the edges curling and that kind of thing aren't going to be a problem. Um, the only other thing on this shawl was there's areas where there are triple decreases. And let's see if we can show that. Let's see. Um, yeah, right there. If you can see that. And, you know, I see that kind of triple decrease now, and I think that, you know, a centered double decrease might have been a better choice. And knitting something like this now, depending on what somebody's trying to achieve in the design, I'll be just as likely to substitute in a different type of uh, double decrease to get something that looks more um, kind of symmetrical and uh, kind of feeds in. You can see how nice... You think about it, how nice would that have been if the tips of these leaves, instead of coming over from the side, went down uh, as a straight line instead um, and everything. But otherwise, it was a really nice little pattern. Really like the lace design. And um, this was before I started doing spreadsheets. Um, at this point in time, if I do any project like this, I will do a spreadsheet uh, to kind of figure out my yarn usage and to figure out if I'm trying to maximize use of all yarn, I will actually use a spreadsheet to help me figure that out. Like, can I go another repeat of this uh, leaf pattern here? And I'll take time to figure that out, see if I can squeeze in another one. Um, but yeah, other than the little bit of curling on this, very happy with this one. Um, now, uh, the next one should be, <laughs> I think, I think this might be the most knitted pattern on Ravelry at this point. Um, and this one is the Hitchhiker, uh, which everybody will know. And so you'll see the, and I used a variegated yarn, which did some really fun pooling there. And, um, my biggest worry as I was making this thing was would I have enough uh, for 42 teeth? And as it turns out, that was not a problem. Now I knit this, I would say, um, so yeah, so it looks really nice. I like the purple, I like the pooling uh, that's happening and it is just the just an enjoyable shawl to make and you'll see another one here. I've knit more than one um, and stuff and really did the yarn a nice service as far as how it looks and everything and uh, really enjoyed knitting it. I would say the only thing I might change here is I might go, you probably should have maybe a needle size larger or two would produce a softer fabric because this definitely has a relatively dense uh, fabric. And, and again, at this point in time, I was not that familiar with knitting shawls and I was particularly not familiar with knitting shawls in fingering on larger size needles um, and the softness you can get in a garter stitch in that kind of circumstance is really nice but highly recommend the pattern it just does really fun things with the variegated yarns and um, and on the second go around of this by that time I had started doing uh, my spreadsheets and so I actually have a spreadsheet um, and I believe it's shared in my second project and that can help you understand if you're going to have enough yarn to knit all 42 teeth. Um, and so it'll help you keep track uh, on that. And so 
uh, and I'll I'll go ahead and link that below as well. Um, but yeah, really fun. You can you can totally see why this is such a popular shawl uh, because it's great mindless knitting uh, and it just knits up nice and fast. Just use one skein of yarn. You can keep it that small and it looks great um, and everything. So um, now the next one, let me make sure I remember the name of all these shawls. Um, let me make sure I have my list up here. It was funny because in one of my uh, videos I was talking about, gee, I wish I had my phone. <laughs> of course, I'm looking right at the phone uh, when I'm making that statement, which is pretty funny. Um, and so let me bring up the whole list of shawls. But I know the name of this next one, so I think I can go ahead and uh, just bring it up. But let me go down here. And right now, I'm only going to cover the shawls I have here. I have some shawls that I've given away, um, but that I might save for a video of its own, perhaps. Uh, we'll see. Okay, so uh, the next one, um, shawl, is, um, so those two previous ones used balls of yarn that I bought at that uh, little Mason, Ohio yarn shop. Now, uh, the next pattern, uh, I love trying to figure out what to do with little random balls of yarn. So I had, what I had was I had a little, ha I had, um, it's a 50 gram ball of a sport weight yarn. And this was Valley Bray Sport. Um, and the neat thing about Ravelry, and I'll, I'm, I'll probably record some videos about how to do, you know, like uh, tricks, I don't know about tricks, but you know, neat ways you can use Ravelry to help you figure out what to do with a little, you know, ball of yarn or something. But um, I looked around and I found this uh, little shawlette called the Caribou Shawlette. And it's really simple. You can see it's got some knit rows. It's got some, uh, you know, pearls there with eyelets on the rows and everything. And that's very nice. And the nice thing is you see there's really no curling in this thing. And it's got this great, like when you get down to the bottom edge, it's got this great applied knits and pearls, you know, like how many rows of, of knits and how many rows of pearls edges on there that really finishes off and prevents curling really nicely on this shawl um, and stuff. This is an extremely rustic yarn, um, but gosh, is it beautiful or what? Love the, love the tweed uh, and everything else. And this thing is just, I mean, it's tiny. Uh, it was 50 grams of yarn, sport weight, and I got every little bit, pretty much every little bit I could have out of it. And it still looks uh, quite cute. So you can just kind of wrap it around one time and have the ends kind of hanging down. And I would wear this to work and everything. And so I'm not judging it up that well here, but it's a neat little shawl and it's a neat little detail. And it turned out so nice and um, highly recommend the pattern. I think the pattern is a really nice way uh, to use up some small amount of yarn and if you could make it bigger by using you know 100 grams instead of 50 you probably get a really nice result and the applied edging is a real neat I don't think I've had any other shawl mm, am I telling the truth there I don't think I've had any other shawl I didn't have to pick up stitches to do that applied edging I've got one other shawl that uses that kind of thing but the live stitches at the end you kind of instead of continuing to work down you work back and forth and uh, just slowly eat those up over time and create a little horizontal edge. And I've got one other shawl we'll be going through here that has that kind of edge, but it's a neat construction detail. It's really fun. And so, yeah, highly recommend that one. Uh, the next one, and this was another, I'm pretty sure this was another ball of yarn I got from the little uh, Mason, Ohio shop. Um, I was working down near Cincinnati at the time, and so I would drive past the Mason, Ohio and stop there. And so <laughs> this is one of those things where sometimes I'll do something just because. And so what I did was I looked around for another interesting pattern to use. And so I found, so I had this nice variegated yarn, and here's this just dead simple uh, garter stitch pattern. And I believe it's called the Sparkling Wedding Shawl. Um, 
and uh, it's a simple garter stitch body and it's knit side to side and so the appeal for me on this side to side thing is I thought hey if I track the usage of my yarn uh, I can use up every bit of this skein and when I get to halfway through the ball and I weigh the ball then I can start decreasing so the shawl as it's described actually comes to a point down here but what I did was I knitted it up to a maximum size and then just knitted straight for a while um, and then started decreasing again uh, you know again making sure I had enough to finish well it turns out I must have miscalculated somewhere because I ran short I think there's about a five inch long piece of yarn left I, bare, you know, I had to cast on cast off excuse me earlier than I should have had to but you really can't tell it's fine and the pattern also called for a garter stitch edge here uh, not garter pardon me it called for a, a crocheted edge on this uh, one edge of the garter stitch which I just chose not to do I didn't think it needed it um, but my favorite thing about this is this has got this really nice um, garter stitch lace and so it's got a lace pattern but it's done in garter and it's an interesting one because there's this you cast off and ca I think you do some cast off and cast on and stuff but the result is a nice open lace at the edge of this at the edge of this and so um, I was very happy with this and this one uh, for the needle size I knitted on produced a really nice and squishy shawl um, and I actually wore this shawl um, with my wedding dress when I got married um, oh how many years ago um, so I made this in 2015 and so I got married in 2017 and yeah it's I'm very I wore it with this nice blue dress that I had um, but yeah this is it's just a neat little shawl and I think <laughs> part of the other reason I picked it out was because I don't think I think maybe one other person made this shawl at the time somehow I can't remember how I settled upon it found it but I decided to go ahead and made it so oddly enough my um, implementation of this shawl is one of the featured pattern pictures <laughs> for the shawl and I highly recommend it it's easy very easy to do uh, and stuff ends up very nice and uh, it's a nice little shawl little shawlette so this next one is one where it's kind of like uh <laughs> what's it wah, wah, you know kind of like oh uh, lessons learned and you know i think if this shawl behaved i would like it uh but so those the ones i've shown you so far i wear those i will uh when the moments come to present themselves but this one is one i do not and um and i really should frog it or do something with it. Hold on, let me come up with a name. I do like it. It's the zigzag, it's the zigzag diamond shawl. And so, and I was really being kind of contrary and I decided to knit it with self-striping yarn, which <laughs> gives some really unusual results. And I don't mind that. I don't mind the self-striping in there doing what it's doing. Uh, this is some Regia yarn. Um, but what is just, so disappointing in this shawl is the level of curling that's happening at the edge it's just rolling up here and it's rolling up at the edge of the lace as well and it's really a nice lace pattern it's this let's see if we can get a good shot of that it's this diamond lace pattern but both edges of the shawl are just rolling in on themselves and so i basically do not uh, wear this shawl as a result and so you know it could probably benefit from some more garter along this straight edge of it and as far as fixing this lace edge of it and again this is um sideways then shawl uh point uh corner to corner uh and i do i do like that it's appealing and so again trying to use as much as possible but but yeah the the fact that it curls so much uh it's kind of like that oh, i don't wear it and i should frog it and Maybe I will at some point. I keep thinking maybe I'll try reblocking it. Maybe it'll help. I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. 
and stuff. And this is going to become a common theme here. Uh, so the next, there's one shawl in the middle of this that I had and it's destroyed. I had this really wonderful lace weight um, alpaca one that came out so nice and um, I have a picture of it uh, destroyed. It went through the wash by accident and turned into this mat. <laughs> And I was so bummed because I used to wear that shawl all the time, shawlette all the time. I actually bought another ball of the yarn. I found the ball of it, <clears throat> bought it, and uh, I intend to remake it, but when it comes up, it's part of the randomizer uh, and everything. So, so now continuing with this theme of rolling edges, uh, we come to the next one, which is this Simple Lines uh, shawl. And so this one uses actually two uh, skeins of yarn and this again came from that little uh, shop in Mason, Ohio. And I actually, again, there's a lot to like here. Here's this gold and brown and purple in here, and it looks really nice. It's your standard triangular shawl. Um, but when you get down to this edge again, you see the amount of curling uh, that's going on there. And again, I wore it a few times, but it just kept starting to curl worse and worse, you know, to the point where I didn't weave in <laughs> the ends on this thing. And it's just was disappointing. Um, I don't know if it's worth trying to reblock. Really like the pattern, other than the fact that you have the curling here. And I think it's a, the reality is I think it's a common problem with these, um, these knit, uh, lace and edges like this is that they if you don't have something that balances out the fabric they'll have a tendency to curl um, and so yeah really loved it um, but it didn't you know it didn't come out and I should either reblock it or frog it or do something with it but really you know just kind of like a, it's always <laughs> you look back at these things kind of like Oh, <laughs> you, know, you had some idea about how it would turn out. It's like, oh man. Okay, so the next one is another hitchhiker. And I got this skein of, this is Lorna's Laces um, yarn that I got in a grab bag from Jimmy Bean's Wool. I had discovered Jimmy Bean's Wool by this time. And so uh, my favorite thing to do, I pretty much don't do this anymore, but my favorite thing to do at the time was ball buy grab bags of yarn and so you'd get some random colors in there and so this is a really nice another implementation of the hitchhikers shawl and I think they're always really successful really nice again depends on if you like flashing and pooling or not but with a variegated yarn you always get some interesting behavior uh, in the shawl it's a snap to knit up and it always looks very nice and I have all my notes are in my projects there about how I went about doing these, but you can see that shirt a little bit. You can see that how it just it's just a fun little shawl to wear, and I highly recommend the pattern and um, recommend using my spreadsheet <laughs> if you want to make sure you're not going to run out of yarn to get your 42 uh, teeth in on that pattern. So I believe we've gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have three more to do. So now this next one is definitely one of my favorites and trimer, I would have to look at the pattern again. This is another self-striping yarn that I used in the close to you shawl. And this is another one I really recommend. So it's a simple, garter stitch shawl. You'll notice I put a pico edge on there on the bottom edge and it's got this again another garter kind of lace edge to it here and I feel like in this self-striping yarn it turned out really nice and um, really highly recommend this pattern and it's just such a nice little shawl so you get this really neat detail here and it's one I'm really happy with. I actually made two of these in the exact same yarn. I gave one to my mom. And um, I would, this is one I should do again. I should find a really interesting variegated yarn and do this one all over again. Um, and stuff. And I highly recommend the pattern. No curling happens here. <laughs> all right. So now we're back to more 
curling and let me bring up let me see what the name of this one is this one is the uh, spring garden kerchief so this is meant to be a small uh, shawlette what happened was I was visiting a Goodwill and there was this lonely little ball of Knit Picks palette uh, sitting there all by itself on the shelf back in the craft area and I rescued it. I, I figured I'd save it uh, and do something with it and I did and I knitted this really really nice lace shawl and you can already see at that bottom edge how it's curling up. But it turned out, I mean, this lace pattern turned out so nice. And this is one where I used a spreadsheet to really calculate uh, what kind of repeats that I could do and everything. And again, with the curling back at the back, I still don't know if I should just try reblocking it or just reusing it as something else. But again, it's like, it's just a nice little shawlette. And I don't wear it because of the curling uh, and stuff. So finally, I'll end this one with, um, so when I discovered Jimmy Bean's wool, uh, it would be back in 2016, I think it was. And um, they, I saw advertised there a uh, craft event uh, for Christmas. So you would get this kit that would have like, 24 boxes for the 1st through the 24th of December. You'd open a box every day. There'd be yarn, there'd be little odds and ends, and uh, there'd be instructions for a pattern. And the idea would be you would knit it leading up to Christmas and potentially <laughs> having it ready for Christmas, I think. And so this was the, I, don't, I think they hit, might have done one year prior to this, um, but this was the first year I was participating in it. And let me get this out here. And I pick. I think there were two, might have been two colors available, um, but I really, uh, I do like the shawl and I've worn it a lot. And so it's got these different shapes and it was a really nice way to sample a whole bunch of different fingering yarns. And they had a whole bunch of different varieties of fingering yarns in here. And I did it exactly as specified uh, in the pattern. And yeah, I wear, I, again, I really enjoyed making it. I love these eyelet sections and how they shift the color in the eyelet sections really effectively and how this edging um, has the, um, was it the uh, different color teeth, different color seg segments in there is a nice detail and everything. It does suffer from just a bit of curling. It wants to curl under a little bit here at this this edge. It's not too bad. You see it also here. Oh, look, <laughs> an end that I need to stick back in there. But I was pretty happy with it overall. I'd say I wasn't crazy about the curling, but I really enjoyed knitting it. And it's really is a pretty shawl. And it was a great way to sample a whole bunch of different yarns. Uh, and so I got to know a variety of, of different fingering weight yarns from doing this this project and again it ends up it's just it's a really nice uh, shawl and I've worn it a lot I should probably give this one a, really a chance at a reblock uh, to see if it works and stuff so so I'll provide uh, links for all of these at the bottom and um, I'll go over the next 10 uh, sometime soon and um, you'll see the evolution. So, you know, basically you can see I started with a lot of shawlettes um, and um, learned my lessons as far as uh, curling behavior at the edges of shawls. And I think in the choices you see that come next, you'll see two things happen. One is I shy away from shawls that, that will have that issue. And the other thing is that you'll see they get bigger and bigger <laughs> as well. So I hope uh, this was useful. Again, I'll provide a bunch of links at the bottom. Um, and uh, thanks for watching and like and subscribe if you like this. And I'll be back with another podcast in a, a week or so or less. And I'll get these out uh, as I can fit them in. So thank you and enjoy your knits.